So this is your very own session, Rosamond, and we're going to be looking at the archaeology of, well, the history of Norman castles across Cumbria. And look at those red dots. There's a lot of them, yes. There is a lot. And now I've got to differentiate between a Norman castle and a native build castle. Now, the Norman build castle, there were many more Norman castles than there were native build castles because it was the Norman way of doing things. But it's not in any way to degrade or dismiss native castles of Cymru because there are a number of really impressive Caracanon, Droysloin, Dolbadin, Dolfornwin, those and loads of native build castles for our princes and lords and kings and so on. They were very impressive. But we're looking at Norman ones today. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of the Normans, but it's out there. Norman castles are everywhere. And it used to be said that there were more castles, Norman and native build castles in Wales than anywhere on the planet, basically. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And, and, and there are one or two still to be found and still to be decided upon. And Norman castles start to be built from the year 1067, which is within months of the Normans gaining the throne of England after the Battle of Hastings on the 14th of October, 1066. It took months for those damnable Normans to get to the border of Cymru. And what they do, they, they jump over they they jump over the river Y, and they, they 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 grab a bit of the territory of our wonderful land, and and that's that's the first Norman castle here, within months of the Battle of Hastings. Can I just ask why there there were so many more in Wales than anywhere else? Were, were, were the Welsh harder to? Um, yes. Yes. That, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, actually, yes, and if I say no, that's wrong. Yes, and the fact of the matter is, is that lots of these buildings show power and wealth. So there was a lot of money to be made out of sub subjugating our people. And then we become very poor and our resources are gone, our trees are gone. And so on and so on. But to build these castles, there's obviously a great deal of wealth here. And this isn't by any ways a definitive map. This is, there's, it gives you an idea. Most of them are on, most of them are on the border area between England and Cymru. This border area all the way down the middle between England and Cymru is in fact called the Marcher areas. And there, there's not hundreds of them, but there's at least a hundred of these on the border Marcher areas. Chapstow is only the beginning. So you take it to sort of weird little castles like Eulow Castle in the north, and you take it to something like Welsh, Welsh Pool, and you've then got other castles like the, the fortified locations like Monmouth and 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 the list goes on and they're, they're in this marcher area but then there's a there's there's two well there's two stroke three major concentrations there's Glamorgan and there's the Gower and there's Pembrokeshire Pembrokeshire in the west used to be referred to as Little Wales Mm -hmm. because it was very anglicised. You could tell that from the castles. So we'll go, be going on to another slide in a moment. But lots of the ones that are on the coast in Cardiganshire 
are also in areas where you've got some tangibly impressive castles like Harlach, and then a bit further up, you've got one called Krikiath. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, Krikiath Castle is a native build castle. And both the one at Harlach, which is more or less where the cursor is showing on the screen here, and Krikiath Castle up the, uh, in, the, in the north. Krikiath is a native build castle, was then taken over by the Normans, and Harlach is principally a Norman castle. And it's both are really impressive but both were built by two different stocks of people initially. So that's a really important point. So Harlech was, was not native. Was it was, it was not there something there before the Normans or? Well, actually, the answer, the answer is probably yes in all these cases. The, the, one, the one reason for building castles is to supplant the local people who were there before. So it's like hmm. saying, well, you know, oh, it's like it's like it's like the supermarket, isn't it? It's like Tesco goes down and Asda takes over all its sites. It's got big yeah. space, you know. That that type that, that type of thing. It's, it's completely wrong analogy, but but the answer is yes. When if we want to look at like Ogmore Castle in the Vale of Glamorgan, it's long known at Ogmore Castle and Coity Castle as well. Both of them, both of them, the the, the stuff that you got there is is Norman. But actually, initially, those were both native sites. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, actually, this is a scratch and sniff, Rosamond. Where is this? You've been there. When did I go there? You've been there with Tom, re really recently. Oh, really recently. Um, where did my I go? My children live there. They live there. I was in uh, um, Abergavenny. That's the one. And Abergavenny. Abergavenny, great. I got there. Now, you see my memory. Now, like, now this is basically, in a way, this is a bit of an analogy between when you got a native castle, a Norman castle, and what this is, is later on in the past few hundred years, people are rebuilding these things because they they want to show off. It, it's it's there was lots of rebuilding of castles like Abergavenny. And there it is on the map. There was lots of rebuilding the castles because people wanted to sort of be attached to the old days. Now, there's a few, there's a couple of interesting points when you read this out in front of us. We got Abergavenny Castle, Monmouthshire, one of the earliest Norman castles in the whole of our land. Abergavenny dates from around 1087. It, that's a little bit after Chepstow, yeah? But. All right. Chepstow, Chepstow is 1067. This is 20 years later. But 1087, none of those castles had been built in, in Glamorgan yet. Castle Cardiff hadn't been built yet. Ogmore wow. hadn't been built yet. Um, St. Quintus Castle hadn't been built. Nothing was at St. Donat. None of that had been built. If there was anything there, it was native. So that's... 1087, that's probably not far off. It, it's probably one of the first 20, 30 castles to be built. And then there's hundreds of the bloody things. So we're talking specifically the word castle. When we use the word mot, mot and bailey, mot and bailey, it's just a mound, a conical shaped mound with a ditch around the outside. And then there's another defended area away from that. That's called a mot and bailey. But castles themselves, as they develop, typical stone castles are the ones that we're looking at. Now, some castles have really tragic stories associated with them, and Abergavenny is one. On Christmas Day in 1175, the Norman Lord of Abergavenny, William de Breos, murdered his long-standing Welsh rival, Cecil Ap Dovach, in the Great Hall of the Castle. And with him... Cecil brought with him a number of other local lords and stuff. So William de Braille said, oh, come on, lads. It's all right. Come on over. It's going to be fine. We're friends after all. And he massacred them all. Mm. Now, the reason why we mentioned that is because 
castles have stories, not just a castle, like they have these backstories. Like Cardiff Castle, the Earl of Gloucester was, was, was kidnapped. And you've got the likes of Coity Castle was besieged by Oingindur. And you've got lots of different stories associated. Each castle is going to have a story with it. You know, Coity Castle, for example, you, you've got, you, you've not got that, only just got that siege about Oingindur. You've got the fact that there are lots of changes going on with Coity Castle. So there's backstories with lots of these sites. Raglan Castle, for example, there's some really nice stories about Raglan Castle, which we'll just mention in a moment. So during the turbulent years of the 1100s, this is another thing. These castles would change hands between the native peoples of our land that the English call Welsh, we call the people of Cymru. And it's, it's swapping between these power factions all over. And sometimes castles are being fought over by native princes and lords and English lords. So it's not just, you know, they're all wanting a bloody bit of it, you know? So talking again about Abergavenny, the castle was significantly added to and strengthened during the 12 and 1300s. And the reason why these things are being strengthened because there's problems. You know, there's, there's problems between everybody. There's all, in the reign of King Stephen, for example, in 1136, when there was the first civil war in England between um, Empress Matilda and King Stephen, it would be, you know, people would, people would be on different sides and there would be even people in our side of the border from England who would either be on Stephen's side or Matilda's side. And in England, there'd be people on this side and that side. So it's always these things are constantly revolving. And this word, the English Civil War, I call it the British Civil War. You can't call it the English Civil War when it took place in Scotland and Ireland and, and Wales. So it's a British Civil War. It's, it's the first, it's a British Civil War. And um, this itself is lots of castles were damaged or destroyed in the Civil War. Because artillery, Caffili Castle is a good example. The, the Leaning Tower at Caffili was meant to have been blown up at the time of the Civil War in the 16, six, between early 1640 and, and the um, early uh, 1650s. There was more than one Civil War, actually. And, and one castle that was absolutely smashed to pieces was in fact Raglan Castle. Uh, the, I, I, um, some, 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 if, you, if you go to these places, you're gonna remember the names of these people. The, 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 the great financier of King Charles was resident at Raglan Castle. And obviously hmm. Cromwell won the war. So, you know, his castle was was taken off him and he and he lost everything, including his great library was set alight. Oh. Some of the greatest books of the history of Cymru, England, were set alight. You know, and you get these tragedies associated with these places. And back to what I said, the image that you look, the image that you, you just saw is has only been there 200 years because it was rebuilt. Like, like a square keep, and, and now it's the place of a museum. The one problem with lots of these sites is that unless they're used for something else like museums, there it is again, they have a tendency to fall into disrepair and not used and loved and inevitably really decaying. So another site, another site is, we're gonna look at Brecon Castle. Now we looked at Abergavenny, we're gonna look at Brecon. And the one, it's useful these notes because they give different things to it. Lots of castles are in important positions. Lots of castles are associated with rivers. And why is that? Well, if you look at Chepstow, it's along a major river. Yeah. And if anyone's attacking a castle, 
you just bring in your goods via, via the river. Unless somebody blocks the river, which is really difficult, you can, you can stay there forever and be supplied by the sea. This was Norman thinking. And whereas you get lots of native castles inland, in upland areas, knowing the terrain, and they've got their own wells. When you know the terrain and you've got your own wells, it's different. But when you don't know the terrain and you haven't got your own wells, being supplied by rivers is your next best option. And that's what happened. You know, Ogmore Castle was already there before, you know, was already there before the Normans sort of constructed it. So that's not a good example of a Norman castle that's supplied by the river. But when you look at the likes of Conway Castle, rivers in the north, Caffili Castle, river, you've, you've also got, um, you've also got Carnarvon, river. You know, lots of these castles have got rivers and waters and, and they can be supplied. And this, this is really important. And actually, um, the near Abergavenny, there's there's a river nearby as well. It was probably very close. So when you get something like Brecon, it 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 commands two rivers. It 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 controls two rivers: the the River Hondi, which gives its name to the Ronda Valley, and the River Usk that goes all the way through to Kalian and comes out in Newport. So and you get all these. You get all these really nice Norman names associated with these castles, like um, Nuvmark, Bernard Nuvmark, who was responsible for building Brecon Castle in 1093. And, and it says, Llewellyn ap Yorath destroyed that first um, castle. It's saying that the first castle was made of wood and in 1231. And again, two years later, it was rebuilt, eventually rebuilt in stone by... Hubert de Bowen, and lots of these names, Bowen and de Clare and um, a, a typical names of people who have got castles. And lots of these lords have more than one castle. So at one point in the late 1200s, the de Clare family could say that it had Caffili Castle. It also had St. Quintin's Castle. It would have been in control of lots of castles. So it's usually that these lords have more than one castle, and that that, that that's the thing. And Abergavenny, you can get to any time. Actually, you can you can go into Brecon Castle as long as you pretend to be a guest, because <laughs> it's now a hotel. Oh. I, I remember taking a group there, and um, and and that that's that's exactly what we pretended to be. So I've just um, I've just got to. What about Rissing Castle? Because Tom and I have stayed there. That is North Wales, yeah? Yes. Because there's just also... Because a... That's a hotel now. That um, I was just thinking of Bracken being a hotel. Yeah. Um, that, that's the point. That, 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 that is a really good point. Lots of these that have been converted into hotels um, are saved forever in a way. But mm. there's lots of alterations. But... The one thing I, I say is that, you know, these buildings should be loved. And one of the big criticisms I've got about our country of Cymru is that people come up with ideas like, you know, we want to buy the remains of this castle. We're going to keep the walls of the castle, but we're going to turn it into a hotel. And local authorities say no. And 10 years later, the castles are falling down. Now, personally, you know, the they should have been allowed to do what they needed to do with that, that castle or manor house. A good example of that is, is um, a building in Lantwick Major called uh, Lantwick Major Castle. It's actually a manor house and a local person bought it off the council for about a pound and they invested millions of pounds in it. And now they are selling the building and it looks beautiful. They've, they've preserved the building from the outside. It looks great. Yeah. Now, if they hadn't been allowed to do that, and if the people hadn't been allowed to do this with a hotel and Ruthin and other places, these places would be or fallen down by now. Yeah. They, they wouldn't be there. So there's lots to be said by, by allowing these 
places to be preserved for a long time because they're being reused. So like lots of these sites, they started off at Mott and Bailey's as the description tells us. And we, we've got those dates there. And we it, it's talking about the lines of the eastern curtain wall of the castle and the opposite wall of the Great Hall have been uncovered during excavation work. So we know a lot about them. And it's talking about it's a large area, 130 metres by 100 metres. So it's, it's quite a considerable area. Lots of these castles in Wales are really impressive. And it uses words like banks and scarps and, and, and commanding buildings and towers and sort of typical language when you look at these types of structures. And there you go, it's now uh, part of it is now occupied by the Castle Inn and Hotel. So we've got something really, really nicely well preserved. So there it is. So it's not, lots of these places are not difficult to find because you go into Abergavenny, you see the castle. You go into Caerphilly, you see the castle. And I tell you what, if you miss a Carnarvon castle, when you go into Carnarvon, you might, well, yeah, you, you, you obviously don't know what a castle looks like. So lots of these castles, you, you can see them because they're meant to be seen. And they've always meant to be seen. They've always meant to be impressive. And, you know, a Brecon, again, you cannot miss Brecon Castle. You just can't miss it. It's, it's just, oh, well, and also, here's a good example, Chepstow. <laughs> it's impossible to miss Chepstow Castle. Yeah. It really, really is. Now, one, one thing that um, this is actually this is actually a little bit of a plan, and you can see that there is the castle, and it is within the confluence of two rivers, the river the river Honvi and the river Usk. So it 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 oh you only need to defend it on two sides because the other two sides have actually got rivers, and it also it it not only do you command the rivers. You control the trade going along those rivers as well. And you can use them as defence. And lots of times castles are associated with churches and, and abbeys and other things that go bump in the night. So it's by, it's by examining and understanding what's going on that you can start to learn. Now, I, I wanted to just, you know, we've looked at that this is something else now. So when we, when I said about castles, it's difficult to make out what this says, but this is in just a small area of Gwent. So you can see within this small area of Gwent, you can, the castle, let's just do a bit of a count. I, I, so between the border and Hereth, uh, between the border and Brecon, You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-five, fifteen, sixteen, ten, eighteen, twenty, 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 over thirty odd castles in that just one wow. area. And those are the ones that are marked on the map. And if you look, if you actually look, lots of them are, are you see these little lines here? Lots of them are along rivers. Yeah. Both along the river, Chepstow along the river. Abergavenny along the river, Usk along the river, Krakow along the river, Brecon along the river. Spot the castle that's not along a big river. Well, there's one there. And uh, maybe one or two others. And that's it. They're, they're mainly along rivers. So would there have been like a main castle and then the other ones were sort of smaller ones that uh, were they all just as important as each other? Well, actually, the answer is yes, no, yes and no. Because... Okay. Over time, so if you were be specific, say, ask me, get, get, ask, ask me, just chuck a date at me, 12, 1260. What was the most important castle in Glamorgan, castle, uh, Cardiff? In 1260, the most important castle in, in Glamorgan was Cardiff, right? Because yeah. the Declare family was the most important was the most important family in Glamorgan. So their most important castle was actually at Cardiff, right? 
But when the yeah. Declare family weren't as important, and then eventually they lost out to dispensers because the last of the great Declares were actually wiped out at the Battle of Bannockburn in, in 1314. When you, um, so obviously castles and the importance of castles shifted somewhere else, whoever was in charge. Yeah, so you'd say you like you say took Goodrich Castle, for example. Yes, which I've is been there. there. Yes. That seems to be maybe a smaller castle. Yes. Would it have been like a lord who lived there, for example? Well, um, actually, actually, they were built by lords for lords, but lords very rarely lived in them. Right. <laughs> because um okay. because built by lords for lords. Yeah, what what would what would happen? Say, for example, the um the English king would say, right. If you if you do a bit of fighting in in over the border, so the English would call us the Welsh. So if you fight against the Welsh, the territory that you capture, you know that's going to be yours, or half the territory that you capture is going to be mine, and half of it's going to be yours. So what would happen is the Lord would say, take over Brecon Castle. If there was an early castle, though, I don't know. Right, can't answer that one. But he wouldn't actually live there. He would just put a custodian in to look after the castle. So, all right, okay. And if you're a Norman or English lord and you've got all these castles, um, you know, you've got more time on your hands. Do you know what I mean? You've you just got, you can't, you can't live in all these castles. It's impossible. You might be a lord and you might have 50 castles. So you might have half a dozen castles in Scotland. We'll have two or three in Somerset. We'll have half a dozen in Wales. We'll have a couple in Yorkshire. The king wants me down by him, so I'll have one in Kent. So some so of these powers were really about powerful. Britain. Yeah. Okay. So we'd always have somewhere to stay wherever. He was. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing as well is, by king, by the king granting you different lands in different areas, you can't get you can't get massively powerful. But unfortunately, that didn't actually work because the big families like the Declares eventually started to get massive control. And this is how you get the Wars of the Roses. So from the right. late 1300s, you get the War of the Roses ended in 1487. And um, 1485 is the established date for the Battle of Bosworth on the, the 20th, of, 20th of August or somewhere around there in... 1485, but the war, the, the war of the roses still went on for a couple more years. But that's because two big families got important, the Lancastrians and the Yorkists. So that's what the king wanted to avoid by giving people different land in different areas. Yeah, okay. Are we are we all right there with that? Yes, that was that was an excellent answer. <laughs> Thanks. Now, now the problem the problem is when you've got a big group. And you've got like 10 people you can't do it I, i've always got to say right we've got to move on okay yes so this is this is this is your time so it's fine pick my brains i'll try i wouldn't do that it, it's if you watched uh, i'm a celebrity and sort of that was quite weird well as you said earlier Quirich castle is not an old Norman castle. No. No. No, 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 it's, no, it's there not. There's been something there before, native, maybe? It, it, it's very possible. Uh, Michelle's been doing research on it, and it has got links to, I think, I think, oh, she's got a book on it, and there are links to early aristocracy and, and um, early lords and stuff, yeah, before that. Yeah. And one thing I want to mention is that is this um, that there is that there's Brecon Castle there, and over time they straighten the rivers. But you can see that this area here is sort of the castellated area, all that. Yes. And not far away is actually the remains of the abbey and the abbey building and the church, which is still stand still and used and standing today. Let's chug on. Ah, this is very close to home. 
This is Kyra Castle okay. ring work. Now, this, this, is, this is very near us. So a Norman ring work castle set within an older Iron Age Hill fort. A timber palisade would have sat on top of the bank surrounding the living quarters. Um, now, it, it, says, it says the word a ring work, a Norman ring work castle. So naturally, when I was setting out this sort of this, this lecture ages ago, I've been meaning to basically this started off as, you know, three lectures in the week and, um, and we never got any sound to it. So, so that's what we're doing now. So when th that's, that's one thing, what I, the question is, what is a castle? Now, that, mm. that's a really good question. What is a castle? The, it's, the castle needs to be defensive. A castle can be made out of timber or stone. Um, and th th that's basically demarcates it from anything else. Would you say a stone castle was more, well, it's more solid, isn't it? Not so likely to catch fire in it, you know, if it's a defensive. That's right. The thing is, timber, timber buildings, right? Timber buildings were only, were only timber, meant to be timber for a very short time. Yeah. If, um, if a timber building was going to be there for a long time, then it's going to be built of stone. If a timber building's there for a short time and and it's just rots away, it obviously proves that the people who actually built that timber building, the 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 objective was held. There was no more problems, and they moved away and they didn't build it out of stone. No. So take take some of that down. We're moving on to the next one in a moment. Okay. Oh, and there it is. And so that's this what it is, is. At Kyra. Yeah, Kyra. Yeah. You can't see it, but those trees are actually it actually slopes down, and that's actually yeah. the roadway all the way up, which goes to the church. And that there is is the earthworks associated with Kyra. That's what they're referring to as a castle. You can actually see all the way over into the heart of Cardiff from there. So was this discovered recently or? No, oh, this has been known for a very long time. Or has it been known about? Yeah, it yes. hasn't sort of disappeared. No. And that's the other thing. Lots of castles had links. It's when you go to, when you go to see Skenfrith, the Skenfrith Gross Mountains White Castle, uh, just east of Abergavenny. And you can see these three castle sites. And the other point to be made is that some castle sites uh, actually had, could actually be seen from each other or they had links or they may have been built by the same people. So. But that, that's that ring thing up by here and that's the modern day church. And that there these are actually the banks of the ring. Oh, I've never been there, so I'll have to have, to have a look at that. You need to take Tom with you. Yes, he would like that. I wouldn't go up in his Porsche. Oh, he hasn't got a Porsche. <laughs> yes. So this, this area, this area here, all of this harp shaped area, this is the hill fort. Um, and this this at the end is the ring work and that's the church so and this is this is the landscape of Kyra and that's the, the bypass which you use to go down to oh, okay um, how I get up to um, Culverhouse Cross is it near there yes do you know as you, you, you as you go down to towards Culverhouse Cross you see a load of bare earth bare rock on the left Yes. And that's what there is on the left. Wow. You can see it. So that's that's the church and the castle. So um, we were lucky not to lose that when they put the bypass through. Uh yeah. Yeah. Very. And even even if they had no give bid an eyelid. No. Me being very, very cynical. Yeah, the well. Other, 
the rest of the area is actually the area of the hill fort. So this was actually built smack bang in the middle of this hill fort. Yeah. It was quite a well defended area, wasn't it? Um, yes. And, and, and look at this a minute. That, that's where it is. So the bypass and there. Fort. Of course, we went up to Dennis Powis Hill Fort. I suppose yeah. they would have traded, would they, these people, or battled? There's every reason why they should have. Um, um, but every yeah. reason. So th this this site itself is is 40 meters um, northwest by southeast by 22, and it, it's got it's got the church alongside it. St Mary's Church. St Mary's, yes. So would the church have been built then as well, or is the church older? Well, we suppose with the hill fort being there. What, what do you mean? I don't understand the question. No, I, I, it's OK. I was just thinking out loud because the, the castle is Norman. But of course, the Iron Age hill fort was there. So uh, right. it's obviously, it obviously occupies part of the, yes. Iron, the Iron Age hill fort, Asia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hang on, I'm pressing the wrong button. Um, hang on. We'll probably have a break in a minute as well. Yes. Covered quite a lot of castles, haven't we, so far? Well, the next one we're going to do is... We've already done that. What we're going to do next is Killian Castle. Kylie on. Yes. So what we'll do, we'll take a break now. Okay. And you've you've done pretty well. Mike, my, my, do you know what? We've only got 32 minutes left. Well, we've done very well, haven't we? And ten, a lot min of ten minutes of that is is um yeah, ten deciding, minutes. Deciding exactly. deciding what we were gonna do and bugle playing. Yeah, that that is really that's really bugle true. Lesson. Yeah, I get I get I get to do a bit of a bugle in a moment. So what we'll do, we'll um we'll pause that now. Okay, I'll put this on silent then. Is it and um ten minutes? Yes. Come back in ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Speak to you in a minute. Cheers. We're recording now. So so we're next to the last little bit. So Killian Castle. Now this is one of the things. There there are lots of little castles around as well, like the one at Killian. And Killian is like the others. It's it's in a defensible position. It's along a river, the River Esk. Um, it's, it's one of those castles that went back and forth. Let's just read the description. Although the Romans had fortified the site centuries before, today's remains are re mainly those of a Norman moat and bailey castle dating from around 1085. Seized by the famous William Marshall, again, another big name, like the Declares, another big name. The timber castle was rebuilt in stone and we, we got Oh England Door mentioned in 1402, captured the castle. So again, we've got another, see all these little things come in, all these little similarities, leaving it in, to fall into ruins and the buildings collapsed over the centuries that followed. And Rosamond. Hello. So what we've got, we've got that. The other thing as well, the other words here, I know that this is all over the place, it's meant to be different aspects. And the castle is in private hands. So some of these places you can't actually get to and can only be viewed from the road. But like lots of castles, there is accessible bits like the one at Brecon, you can access a bit of the tower. And if you go in there as a, as a guest, you can, um, with, with this as well, the tower can be seen from the Hanbury Arms. And there's a tower in the middle of nowhere. And lot, the other thing as well is it's mentioned the Roman site. Lots of these places, reuse early material so you know a norman castle oh. might might reuse the remains of a a, a roman site and, and 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 the normans will might make use of what was there before and so on and if you're going to rebuild something later on like this usually th this is a this is a bit more of the like bit more of the rebuilt wall associated with the castle but that is that nice tower if you ever get to 
luckily, and alongside the Hanbury Arms, there's this really nice bit of a round tower that is completely made yeah. out of Roman material. Wow. Lush. Um, you know, I, I always like take, taking people to this tower. It's 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 the highlight of my visit when I go to Killian. Um, so the round tower is made from Roman. Yeah, look at it. There's bits of Roman stone all over the place, yeah. So what did the Romans have there then? Um, uh, they had a Roman fort. Okay. There's, there's, a, there's a Roman fort there. And it's it's a it, it is a really gorgeous tower if you ever get to see it. It's worth a drink and sort of wander around. And that that's the sort of map there. So you go again, another one, you go over the bridge, you've got the tower on your right straight away. So so none of these castles are disguised. You know, you could you could um if you went to Cleon, you could miss the Roman remains. It, it's easy to do. You can go to Bath and miss the Roman Roman remains. You obviously yeah. can't go to Adrian's Wall and miss Adrian's Wall, but you can. You can just go on the main motorway and you, you've just gone past it. Um, yeah. Roman remains are a different sort of fish altogether, but when you think about something like Killian, it's, it's you know, the, this tower, that tower that I mentioned, uh, bits of reconstructions are available for everybody to, to look at. So a few facts. This is, again, an early one, 1086. Um, so we've mentioned the Moton Castle. Uh, the, mo the, the moat itself is 30 metres high still, but I have never seen it because you can't actually get in to have a look around. So, so Rosamond, right, if, if we do one of our Seek and Search videos, you might be able to get in there. Seek and Search. Yes, that'd be good. Seek and Search. Been so much since the tunnel, have we? Yeah, exactly. Um, so a stone structure of some form occupied the summit, the foundations of which were robbed out in 1799. So it wasn't just in the medieval period that these things were robbed and reused. Over the years, they've always, these things have always been used for building material. And, and there's lots of um, landscaping. And again, this thing about a Motton Bailey mounds and it's saying that the whole area enclosed was about 150 meters by 50 meters, that type of thing. So, so you've got areas where you've got you know, impressive sites, not impressive, so all different types of sizes. There's no rules. In other words, there's no rules to Norman castellated sites. In fact, there's no rules for, to any native sites either. So actually another weird one we're going to go to is Caldicott. Mm. So this has an interesting word. word. Caldicott, standing on the site of an earlier Saxon fortress. Bloody hell. Um, probably not a Saxon fortress, but there's something early there. So Caldicott, there's something early there. Again, another, we weren't going to do Mott and Baileys. We're meant to be principally doing castles. But that's there as well. 1086, another early castle. So we're doing lots of the early ones, actually. Yeah. In 12, actually, I, I think, um, I think I've just realised something. The proper name of this lecture, I think, was Early Norman Castles in Cymru. <laughs> so when we do one of the other one next week, you'll probably find out, you know, it's, it's meant to be about wine, but it's actually meant to be about something else. But anyway, so, port, so port, again, fortified wine. yeah, fortified wine, exactly. So Henry de Bowen, another major name, the Earl of Hereford, 1221. And you get these large keeps, so obviously a four-story high keep in Caldicott. You, you could imagine that that's that's the tallest thing ever that these people have ever seen. When you think about scale, you know, a four-story tall building. My God, that's that's the. It's like it's like um, phenomenal, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you know the, when they built the um, Empire State Building in 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 New York. Yes, that was the tallest building, and people thought, my God, that's amazing. It's like the Alfield Tower. Nobody had seen anything like the Alfield Tower that tall ever. And, and it's just like, and it's like the pyramids. They, they, they see these, these, these towering pyramids and it's the tallest thing. So this is meant to stand out. And, and another thing as well is one thing we haven't mentioned. It, this is coming in the next slide. 1373, um, the, um, the last of the line of the Bowen family died out. So in 1373, so this was one of the things, what happened was that 
lots of these castles um, fell out of use because you know the male or the last female members died out. So if the last female members in the family, because all the male members are gone, they would marry into another family and another lord would take over. But sometimes the line completely dies out. There's no one left. So the castles are completely abandoned. In this case, in Caldicott, it says the castle became home to Thomas Woodstock, the youngest son of Edward II, who transformed it from a defensive fortress into a luxury royal residence. That's the other thing as well. There's the castles that did survive, as we, as we see, either fell into ruin, well, that's, that's, that, that's actually, it can't survive if it falls into ruin, can it? but you know what I'm trying to say. They either fall into, fell into ruin, they were reused for some, something else, or the people who owned the castle said, actually, we're not gonna have a, we're not gonna have it as a castle anymore, we're gonna have it as, a, as our home, but we're gonna make it into a luxurious residence like Hampton Court or Windsor Castle or something, yeah? So they changed, they, they, kept, they kept it as their home, but they changed its use. So instead of being absent landlords, they actually made it into their home. So like lots of these castles, they, they are then purchased by people or they're purchased by councils. And this one was built by the antiquarian, a certain J.R. Cobb in 1855, who restored Caldicott back to its medieval best, like they like the Marquis of Butte did with Caffilly Castle. And he did the same with um, Casteth Cork, William Burgess in 1877. Lots of these, again, people might buy these things and they might want to recreate the things. And so actually, yeah, it says the castle now stands in 55 acres of Country Park. To be honest with you, I don't know who actually owns it. That, that's probably your homework for next week. Is it still owned by the, the same family, the Cobb family, that bought it in 1855? That's your homework for next week. Right. So we're going to crack on a bit, and that that's how impressive these great towers, look how impressive these are. So not all of what, that's the other thing, not all of what you see with these castles, they're, they're, there's where Caldicott is, it, it's actually Caldicott, you, you need, well, there's exceptions to the rule, when you go to Caldicott you need to take a couple of turnings and then you get to see this magnificent castle. When you do see castles like like this, sometimes lots of what you do see has been rebuilt. It's not exactly all the original castle. So again, it's talking about Caldicott being a castle that's 100 meters east by west. It's got lots of towers and gateways and it's got um, various ramparts and it's got, it's associated with the local church and over the years. And that's the other thing, we haven't mentioned archeology span much. Some of these sites have been archeologically excavated or they've had geophysics in, or they've there's been aerial photography, or lots of different things are happening. And there's lots of nice architectural features. So there we go. We're gonna, and um, do you know what? I, I wanna I wanna finish this thing. So if we go five minutes over, that's what we'll do. So Camrose Castle, Haverford, West Pembrokeshire, again. It is early, early Norman castles, Rosamond, 1080. <laughs> so this is early, this is, other than the ones that we've seen, this is 1080. So it this seems is- seems like that's when the main building was going on. Yes. It, it, did, yeah. did, did they do much in the, the future centuries or? <clears throat> this, this is the first Norman stage in the South and the South East and the South West. But as the rest of, nor as the rest of Wales was, the 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 kings and princes of Cymru were doing their own thing. So that that was. It wasn't until 1282 that that Norman castles were being now built in North Wales. Up until that point, the Normans hadn't been in North Wales. So oh, that's interesting to know. So basically, um, this is interesting. Uh, Camrose Castle built. And it was it was a place that William the Conqueror stayed at. So they probably there there it is that that's how it that's that Rosamond is what I was talking about Mott and Bailey. Yeah, that's that's like a reconstruction of what Camrose would have looked like. It's called a shell keep in the middle at the top. That the, yeah. that's a shell keep because it was 
two concentric walls with a with a courtyard in the middle and an open space. Maybe you wouldn't be able to get up there if you had mobility problems, would you? Back in the day, there was no elevator. I tell you what, it wouldn't stop. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't stop my mate Richard. Uh, that's Good. that's. Um, Hang on, I just got to double check what this image is. Hang on a minute, I I'm just making sure. Yeah, that, that image there, you know, we saw lots of changes to castles. That's how it looked like, and that's how it looks like today. Very different. Wow, Again, very used, different. Used as a stately home, and he got the, the water there, and that's where Camrose is in, in West Wales. Yeah. And if you look there, you've got, just down the road, you've got another castle as well. So are these on a river? Uh, actually, actually, the one down there isn't. That one is the Camrose is Camrose Brook. Oh, because Camrose, if you look, yeah. if you look back, look at that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if they were linked by a river. You see, not those two. No, I don't. No, no I don't. Not that. Not those two. And it sort of says that um, it, it's talking about a currently ditchless moat, but you've got this large. It, it's extensively changed and you've got modern roads and, and and it's obviously completely altered and there it is it's now called Camrose House not castle but... it, yeah yeah it, it, <laughs> that that's a that's a good point that it's 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 like it's like Blenheim Palace that originally started off as a castle but it's it's not anymore you know so the next one we're going to look at is is Cardiff Castle that's 1081. As I, um, Glamorgan didn't have any Norman castles until around 1090, except for Cardiff. Right. So the first Martin Bailey, like the one we've just seen with Camrose, was built in 1081. It and basically the Normans used utilized the Roman fort as a defense to build the castle. So in other words, there's there's already a wall around them, so they just got to build the castle within the walls. And then they can start using some of the Roman walls to actually build the castle as well. In other words, it's like, um, you know, you, you, you see these films and you've got, um, um, you know, the, these these soldiers land in the middle of a fort. And yes. and, and then, there's, then they're surrounded by people who want to kill them. But, but, you know, the fort's already there, that type of thing. And it, and obviously the castle become a substantial site and it was attacked several times by Owen Glyndwr in about 12, in about 1402 and 1404. And it, um, following the Wars of the Rose and the military significance of the castle began to decline, like lots of castles. Their reason fell out of use until the 1700s come in when it's transformed into Cardiff Castle as we see it today. Thanks to the... Um, thanks to the, the first Marquis of Butte and then the third Marquis of Butte that put a lot of money into the castle. And uh, look at that there. That's also a shell keep, Rosamond, on top of a uh, Motton Bailey. And that, that in the back there, the, the reconstruction is by, by William Burgess was actually on the exact gateway of the actual Roman fort. You can actually see the, oh, okay. the, the, the sandstone uh, not the sandstone, the limestone, the blue lias limestone walls. And then you see the, 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 the gray sort of blue lias limestone walls. And on top of that, you've got red rather sandstone. And on top of that, you've got re reconstructed wall. And it, it's sort of giving you more information here. And, and um, 1081, you've got the civil war, you've got reconstruction started 1868 by, by 1877. William Burgess is really getting into it and you've got all the reconstruction there and it, it's really transformed all the way to the 1920s. It takes them a long time and it's describing, it's describing the various different buildings, the, uh, the, the offices, the apartments, the, the shell keep in the middle and the earthen banks and the towers and the halls and all the rest of it. And, and, in, in a way, what William Burgess did with the Marquis of Butte was save the castle by making it romantic. Lots, lots of that stuff was demolished and changed, but you can't have it all. And this is actually Skenfrith Castle. This is 
set on the banks of the River Mono, the first timber and earth defences were built shortly after the Norman conquest of England in 1066. This was slightly after Chepstow, but not far after Chepstow. And eventually they put a stone tower on there, built to provide border defences against attack. The early castle was replaced by a more substantial stone fortress in the 1200s. Although Skenthrift briefly saw action during the rebellion of Owingly during 1404, by 1538 the castle had been abandoned. And this was 1538. So again, this is one of those castles that were abandoned. Yeah. Moving on. And uh, Skenfrith. And really lots, and this one, when you go there, there's this has actually got a little harbour associated with it as well. The car park was actually the harbour. Oh, that's interesting. So when you go, ah, and also don't go to the castle when it's when it's raining a lot because you might not see your car because it'll just oh. get washed away into the river. It, it does happen. Oh, it happens at Ogmore Castle as well. So it's a really impressive site, quite a beautiful site, actually. And these and um, and lots of these locations are so picturesque that they film the likes of Doctor Who and so on at these places. Yeah, I think Doctor Who was actually Doctor Who was actually filmed here one episode. And uh, re really, really typical. And there's Skenfrith, and it's very close. Look at the border; it's very close to the border. So this would be classed as a this would be classed as a Marcher Castle. A Marcher Castle. So what's the Marchers? The Marcher Lords. The territory between the English and the Welsh. Skenf here we go. Skenf Skenfrith Castle, originally earth and timber form, was built by the Normans during their settlement of England in order to protect the communication routes between Hereford and England, forming a triangle of defence between Grossmont and White Castle. I mentioned that earlier on. The earthworks were later levelled in order to make way for the red sandstone castle begun in the late 1100s to prepare for possible Welsh attack in a design which was aimed both at military efficiency and domestic comfort. So there's a bit of everything there. And a 12 meter wide moat. And again, we've mentioned that date abandoned in 1238. Lots of the, and some of these sites have either been taken over by city councils, English Heritage, National Trust or CADU or something like that. Now, but not in that 1538, no. No, I, I, no, I don't no. think the National Trust was around in the, No. Yeah, no, it wasn't. This, this, is, this is a rather interesting one. Trut Hill, Castle, Rutland. Now, on a spur of land overlooking the River Cluid, this early earth and timber moat and bailey-type fortification was built by Robert of Rutland in 1073 to consolidate Norman advances into North Wales. Now, the bit of North Wales that was... Uh, that this was built on wasn't actually part of the Kingdom of Gwynedd. But what happened as soon as the Kingdom of Gwynedd started to realise that the bloody Normans were getting into the north, it has claimed that the site was originally occupied by the royal palace of Gruffydd at Llywelyn. Um, and ba basically, um, yes, so, so they would have reclaimed it and then it went back in hands I think that's what that's trying to say. So he, he built a site there, then Gruffydd ap Llywelyn captured it, and the, 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 the Kingdom of Gwynedd said, right, this is our territory, not English. And then it changed several hands, and then over time, into 1282, when Edward the First knew Redland Castle was built a short distance away downriver. So again, you know, when we get into of that late period, we actually see lots more Norman sites and this massive mound. So the, the, the princes of Gwynedd said, bugger this, you know, it's ours. So they took it back. So good. It, it's, um, it, it's, it's a protected site. Lots of these sites are, are scheduled and protected. And then finally, do you know the, um, we haven't done Chepstow, have we? We mentioned Chepstow. Chepstow Castle. That building there, that that bit of the building there probably dates 
that that architecture there probably dates precisely to about 1067. Wow. That that what you're looking at. 1067. And it it's it's a very, very impressive site. And again, and, and look at that there now. Yeah. That overlooks the river. And they would have had a system of pulleys to bring stuff up to the castle. Uh, and, you know, this could be easily supplied. So as long as you get a boat, what you would have done, you'd have got a vessel in the middle of the channel of, of the river. And then you'd have got a little rowing boat over to the side of the wall. Um, and then then stuff would have been pulled up and down and the ship would have protected these people from from the opposite bank. And this is this is all about defense. And they needed to build it on the on the Welsh side because they, on the English side, it wasn't that defensive. So they built they captured this little bit and they built it here. Yeah, it looks um, solid there, doesn't it? And, and look at that. That is the entrance. In, that is the. Um, Hang on a minute. Let's just go back a minute. That that's what you look at. the The gateway is there, and these massive, important, powerful towers. And and I, I can remember right. Forget my facts straight. That tower is known as the Tower of the Regicide. Somebody you killed the king or something. I can't remember. But there's something. There's lots. Again, lots of little stories about these castles. And you've got to go inside now into the into. This, this look at that Norman architecture, absolutely beautiful. So you don't see much Norman architecture like this surviving. No. Because it, you know, the Normans really didn't start to, to get a massive foothold across the whole of Cymru until Edward I defeats Llewellyn the last uh, at Kill Mary. It's then that it's then that you get mega castles like like um, Carnarvon and Caerphilly and so on. And and look at this here, um, just just a just a little thing here. This is Rumney Castle, a ringwork and manorial centre. Again, the word ringwork and castle. This is one of the sites that archaeologically been excavated. Again, this is a fairly early site, and again, another indication of what you've got: Cardiff Castle, Cardiff had Cardiff Castle. You had uh, Rumney Castle. You had the one at Cairo. Uh, you you got um, Craigie Castle, I think, and you got lots of other castles in a very small area. This is they really want to get this really defensive. But that that one itself, his first mention was in eleven eighty four, but it was probably um, dating to a lot earlier than that. And they have actually excavated this. I've just got to just got to close the door a minute because it just suddenly swung open. We're nearly at the end because I've got to get my shivering ducks in in a minute. Oh, yeah. It's quite, it drops cold at this time of night, doesn't it? It, it? does. It does. I'll, I'll, see, there, there you can see. Can you see that date on there? Um, Romney possibly dates to 1081. So, along, so when they got to Cardiff, they thought they built all these little castles. And there's loads of information about it on the internet. So when you look at Romney Castle, put in Romney Cardiff, not Romney Valleys. There's a big difference. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I didn't know there was one in Romney Cardiff. A yeah, Romney people. Cardiff, and there's lots of there's a there's a pottery, there's Roman evidence, loads of stuff. So this is associated with the Digby Clares as well. So if you look that up on the internet, and also when I put this out, you'll be able to sit read this again anyway. So that that's yes. um, and we haven't mentioned much archaeological evidence, but when you look at these sites, you find lots of archaeological evidence through the periods, and this is this is. Um, I think this is a, a spear bodkin, not an arrow bodkin. Um, what's the scale of? Yeah, this is a spearhead, isn't it? So it's about ten centimeters. That's a spearhead. Wow, massive! You can see that. That that's in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's centimeters, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite chunky. And again, more of these. These um. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, these are arrowheads. Bodkins. Iron. And again, looking at that archaeological evidence, and that, ah, weirdly enough, was that, that, yeah, that, that's what it used to look like. That, 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 it's all houses now. 
I was going to say that it's probably all been built on. All of it's been built on. Yeah. There's nothing like that today. That, that's Romney Castle as it once was. Even on, they've even, have they built on the temp there as well? Yeah, it's all built on. It's all built on. That's why they excavated there. Wow. And actually, that's the last image. So there you go, Rosamond. Wow, very interesting. Um, would the style of the castles over the, say, the 200 years that they were built, would the styles of the castle have changed much? Yes, quite considerably, yes. Yeah. yeah. Always, always. So obviously, you're starting off with Motton Bailey castles, wooden castles, and then you've got... Um, then, then you've got a central keep and you've got walls around the outside and you've got gateways and you've got multiple ditches and you've got um, square towers, circular towers. Um, there, it's, it's constantly changing. And then you look at Edward the I castles and they evolve. Yeah. And by the time Edward I is building his castles in the um, late 1200s, they're highly influenced by what the Crusaders are seeing in the Holy Land. Wow, yes. And... And um, you are allowed one more question and then I'm off. Uh, no, that's that's my questions done. Um, Normans in Wales, or rather the early Norman <laughs> castles <laughs> to, to, to be. Yes. Uh, you know, another whirlwind tour around Cymru. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, and next week you can choose whatever you like. Right. Well, have you got any ideas which ones... What might follow on quite nicely from that? Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a choice. And I'm, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to add, I'm just going to say something else in here for, for anyone else who's actually watching this. This is a, a private tuition class for anyone that is interested. And this is what Rosamond is doing with us today. So if anyone wants to have one of these classes, a one-to-one, -one, I'm sure that Rosamond would recommend it. Highly recommend it, yes. So maybe next week, if you will go through that list and maybe you can possibly choose from that list what, what floats that your you've boat given with. me. Yeah, that's right. Or, that's or right. that you show me. It, it, it would be good to sort of maybe try and follow on from what we've just done. What, what would be... Maybe you mentioned something about Ireland. Maybe that would follow on from it. Actually, yeah, may, maybe um, Ireland. Um, oh God, what 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 else could we do? Anything we could do. You know, the, any of the food ones. We could do the wine one. That sort of follows on. The wine was yes. big in the meals, beer, games. Butter, bread, yeah. or, or any of these things. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a food one, that's what we'll decide next week. Okay, sort of wine, beer, foods, games. Yes, anything. That which kind of follows on, you know, because I, I, I don't know when you say wine and beer and food and games. That takes us way back, some of those, but some of the other ones is a bit Yeah, old. do you mean across the... the yeah, across the, the, the periods, century. across the world and all the rest of it, yeah. Yes. Anyway, well, yeah, that would be good because we could think that, you know, maybe think about what, what games and foods and things they had in these castles at the different periods and things. Yeah, great. Exactly. So what I'm going to do, if um, anything else you could think of, to, uh, you can ask me next week. But we, we will okay. we will call that a day now. So thank you very much for the first one of those. So our yes, one to one archaeology, if anyone else is interested, and we will see you tonight. Yes, so see you later, alligator. In a wild crocodile. I'm going to do my fire as well. Are you going to blow your bugle? Do you have at to the blow end. your bugle at the end? Or? No, actually, we should do no, a bit of a bugle. Just... No, no, we should do one at the end. Hang on a minute, hang on. If we can... Um, we, we we worked out, right? If I'm sat down, I can I can probably do it a little bit better. So here we go. Hang on, you've got to, you've got to warm it up. Yeah? Okay. Did that 
that sound good? Marvellous. And that concludes today's um, lecture. Yes, it does, Rosamond. Langford and Rosamond Ellis Evans. <laughs> Over and out. Part one done. Oil. Hold on, Diochen Varchi. Yes. Oil Vaur. See you later. Gwilochi and Noson. Yeah, Dioch. Diam. Yes. Diam. Nasta. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So anyone that's uh, still watching this, it's um, this was actually a lecture that I was going to do some voiceover to. So I thought, well, I've got all these these videos on my system, and I'll do one to one classes. So if anyone's interested in any of these one to one classes, they're, they're three classes, an hour and a half, ten minute break in the middle. It's thirty pounds. And um, if anyone's interested, then the, the, the details, it's www.archaeologycumryonline.weebly.com. It will be down below and you can, you can go there and you can join us. Again, don't forget to subscribe and like. And that'll be very much appreciated. And what we're going to do as well, I'm going to do one last thing on here as well. And we will close on this. So I've just got a screen share on this last thing here. And watch this. Again. Thank you very much for watching this video and um, just come on over. I am an archaeologist, master of, master's degree in archaeology. Um, so if you want me to teach you anything about archaeology, come into my living room and we'll do this online. Great. Thank you very much. Over and out.